Hey everybody, welcome to the Midweek Message. You know, God has been using this time that we've had together weekly since COVID-19 uh, really shut down our ability to gather together. And, and we've just seen God utilize uh, this time uh, each week on Wednesdays to help be a connecting point, um, but also to be just a source of encouragement, of ministry. And, and the question throughout this time, this whole season that we've been in for us um, as, as part of the church leadership has been, how do we continue to, to connect uh, disciple and encourage and lead uh, the body well in spite of of these challenges that are really unprecedented for us and 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 with the also the new ra- reality that that they seem to be challenges that we're going to be dealing with for a while and and as we started asking that question initially out the gate of how do we respond how do we uh, create more opportunities to connect with our people and and, and to build and to disciple. And, and that's when this idea came about, was to do the midweek uh, message as a way to do that, as a way to encourage you and help just walk through this uh, season with you. And it's interesting, when we started this process, I know personally I was thinking, hey, maybe we'll do this for two weeks or, or four weeks, uh, maybe maybe six, okay? Let's just be crazy here. Maybe six weeks we, we do this midweek and then you know we'll be back uh, to normal and and boy that was <laughs> that was over four months ago. And so uh, we're faced with with the reality of how do we continue to answer the question of how do we effectively disciple, build, uh, encourage and lead um, our local body here at Ecclesia? How do we continue to do that? And so it's in light of of that question that we've we've come to the conclusion with this time, what we want to do with it um, is is create greater intentionality with it, take it a step further, and what we want to do is um, start different topics or series through our midweek messages, and so we want to pick a topic and and walk through that uh, in a series format um, and and really break that down. And, and we just feel like this is a unique opportunity this Wednesday midweek to um, to talk about different things that maybe we uh, maybe aren't in the the specific verses that we're going through on a Sunday, uh, or just maybe there's some topics that that we're like, man, we'd love to to bring some more intentionality to this uh, or, or help equip our people in navigating through this. And so we definitely have appreciated uh, the time that we've had, uh, but we we also understand and know that moving forward, uh, we want to make this more effective for you. And we just believe that that will help us do that. And we believe also you'll be able to get more out of this time together because we we really do think this is important and a priority uh, for us. And so what we're going to do starting uh, this next week is we're going to uh, go into a short series uh, each Wednesday night um, on prayer, or not on prayer, but on parenting, and which you need a lot of prayer for. But what, you know, as, as we think about just parenting, I think this will be a huge encouragement to you. I think it will challenge us, but I also think it will help us to more effectively navigate through these times, whether you have kids or, or you don't, whether they're in your house or they're out of your house, you know, we, we all... Uh, to some degree, have influence and can bring influence into the lives into the lives of kids. And what we hope to do with this time, um, with this series, and, and the series that that we will um, also uh, be revealing and, and going into, what we hope to do is is to also bring in different people, different people uh, that can help speak into these different topics, uh, that can bring that uh, biblical perspective. We'll do some interviews and and, and things like that. And and, and so we, we hope that this is a, just a unique time each, each Wednesday that we can have together uh, that's different than a Sunday, but also that, that you feel like you're being poured into, discipled, encouraged, and challenged uh, in your faith, in your walk, uh, so that you can more effectively, from a, Bible, from a Bible-based perspective, walk through uh, these times. Um, and I, you know, I know for me, as we think about parenting, one of the challenges I've faced during this time is, 
is to not penalize my kids uh, for my own uh, shortcomings, for my, my own issues, right? Because I, I think we all, if you have kids or, or, or maybe you are reaching out and connecting with, with other kids and you just have that influence, I think one of the dangers that, that I see right now is um, in how we're um, experiencing it we tend to project that onto kids and it's almost like we act like it's just our problem and that they're not going through anything. You know, the reality is uh, that that they're going through a lot of difficult things during this time as well. And it's affecting them. And it's tough. It's hard. I've seen it in my own uh, boys. And so the, the question that, that we're confronted with is, is how do I guard my heart from from not projecting my own issues, insecurities in this season? How do I guard my heart from projecting that onto my kids? And then how do I be intentional in helping them navigate through this season in their life that is unprecedented, that it's that's difficult, where they're filled with unknowns, where they're being asked to wear uh, a mask, where they're where they're social distancing, where they where they're they're excited uh, about going back to school, but they don't know if they're going to go back to school. They don't know what anything is going to look like, um, and they know, and they're also like not seeing so many of their friends that they used to see. Um, they're not experiencing so much that is a part of summer. And so how are we going to help them navigate through this? How are we going to help disciple them through this time? I'm reminded of, of, thir- of th- third John uh, 1, 4. And in third John 1, 4, it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. So he said, the writer says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Now I remember my dad used to to say that any any I remember when he bought me a Bible and and he wrote that in the Bible he wrote that verse and and so I've 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 thought about that verse uh, a lot and because he would say it a lot to me growing up but then you know as I as I have my own kids I've I've thought about that verse and and the writer here when he's talking about uh, his children he's referring to his spiritual children or uh, the beneficiaries of his ministry. And he, said, and, he, and he literally says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. And, and as you think about that, how exciting is it to see kids, whether they're your kids, whether they're not your kids, or whether you have played a, a, a small part or a large part in their spiritual growth or in their desire to love Jesus or to be more curious about the things of God. And to want to pursue them, or maybe through your teaching, uh, through a conversation, through your walk, a child has said, I would like to get baptized. And you think about those moments, you think how powerful they are when you see that light click on uh, in their little lives, that, 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 they, that they start to understand who Jesus is, they start to desire that, they start to want to walk that. And like I said, whether they're yours or not, it, whether they're five years old or, or 55 years old, it is, there is no greater joy. There really is no greater joy. And so when you think about that, when you think about the spiritual children, the beneficiaries of your ministry, your ministry, whether you have this title, whether you work at a church or not, you have a ministry. You do. All of us do. And so the question is this, how are my physical kids or my spiritual kids, how are they going to be beneficiaries of my ministry? And what do you want that to look like? How are they going to benefit spiritually as a result of my influence in their life? And that's that looks... And plays out in a bunch of different ways. And so in the next few weeks here, the next three, four weeks, we're going to walk through some of those things, some of those principles, some of those concepts, some of those ideas. And and Lord willing, help you navigate through uh, these difficult times.
But I pray that as we move forward in this, that it is a source of encouragement, that you look forward to this time, uh, and that we see God uh, really move uh, in, in, in great ways, and, um, and, and that we can continue to guard our, our minds and our hearts from essentially putting this, you know, uh, w- when you when you think about a race and 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 you think about that that prize or whatever that is that everybody's going after, um, we have to continue to guard our minds and our hearts from putting in person uh, as that goal. In person is never uh, the goal. We desire to be in person. The goal is always to glorify God, to follow, to pursue, to love, and to magnify Him. And so during this time, that's still the goal. That's still the heart. That's We're still going to pursue that with all that we are. And, and we're going to trust him that for such a time as this, he's going to use what we do and say. And in this context, with our kids, with the kids that are around us, he's going to use us to be effective, maybe like no other time during this time. Amen? God bless you. Look forward to talking more next week.